Hello everybody and welcome back. Today our topic is going to be about the excitation contraction coupling in the cardiac muscle. The excitation contraction coupling has 10 steps. The first step is the action potential spreads from the cell membrane to the T-tubule. So there's a stimulus forming an action potential, reaches the cell membrane, spreads into the T-tubules. So this is the first step. The second step is the inward calcium current during the action potential plateau phase. These calcium currents enter the cell through the L-type calcium channels, which have a critical dependence on extracellular calcium. For the third step is increase of calcium with 10%, which triggers the calcium-induced calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So this increase in calcium triggers calcium to be released from the storage sites of calcium in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The fourth step in this contraction excitation coupling process is more calcium is increased, is released with 90% which promotes actin and myosin interaction and contraction. The fifth step in this process is calcium binding to troponin C, which forms tropomyosin moving out, and myosin binding to the sites on the actin filaments which are exposed. The sixth step is the myosin cross bridges bind to the underlying actin. So the myosin binds to the underlying actin, which forms one direction movement of the myosin head, which pulls the actin filaments toward the center of the sarcomere. For the seventh step is actin and myosin bind together. This binding forms the myocardial cell contraction, developing a tension proportional to calcium. And the eighth step is relaxation occurs when calcium is restored by active calcium ATP pump which is electrogenic 3NA and one calcium antiport transport system or also by the sarcolemma calcium pump the ninth step is ATP is needed to release myosin from the actin and finally the tenth step in the excitation contraction coupling process the partial hydrolysis of ATP energizes the head of the myosin for another cross bridge cycle and the cycle is repeated over and over again. So these were the 10 steps. For the action potential plateau, the voltage dependent L type calcium channels cause calcium influx in, which is small but critical for the opening of the sarcoplasmic reticulum calcium channels. When the calcium is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, it increases the calcium inflow inside the cell membrane through the T-tubules, which sufficiently is exposed, exposes the myosin binding sites on actin, which allows contractions. Relaxation occurs as the calcium is lowered from the combined actions of the calcium uptake by the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and calcium extrusion by the sarcolemmal calcium pump and the sarcolemma pump is 3 sodium to 1 calcium antiport pump the action potential in cardiac muscle is about 300 milliseconds in time which overlaps the contraction resulting in a long refractory period which is a modulation of L-type calcium channels used as an alternative strategy to increase the force of the contraction. The movement of calcium in excitation contraction coupling in the cardiac muscle forms an influx of calcium from the interstitial fluid during the excitation which triggers the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum as we said before. Presystolic, cystosolic calcium activates contraction of the myofilaments which forms the systole. And the relaxation, which is the diastole, occurs as a result of the uptake of calcium by the sarcoplasmic reticulum and the extrusion of intracellular calcium by the Na calcium 
exchange and to a limited degree by the calcium pump. So this was the excitation contraction coupling in the cardiac muscle with the steps. Thank you very much and hope to see you soon again in the next video.